Now there are different kinds of distributors out there and I'm going to be going through a few different things that may not be applying to all the distributors that you're working with or even some. The breakdown is the distributors that are going to be doing the most amount of work are DSD jobbers. They're the boots on the ground guys that have their own warehousing space. They put the product into their vans or trucks. They drive to the stores. They sell the product in the store. Then they restock the product off the shelf. So they do the majority of that front end work, which is great. However, you're going to be paying for that on the margin end. The next level is going to be the regional distributors, the um, beer distributors, the Frito-Lays guys. Those distributors, they're going to have a much more structured program where you're going to know where you're being shipped into, how it's going to be laid out in the warehouse, what to expect as far as IRI data or how they allocate sales reports. You're going to be filled in a little bit more and they're going to be taking a smaller commission However, they're not going to be doing maybe the merchandising or the sales. So you're going to have to hire another team for that. And their commission will, you know, justify that. Next level is going to be more of a warehouse delivery operation, uh, UNFI, KEHI, where, you know, they may have a sales team with a book of business that is, you know, bigger than a phone book. And their job is to really deliver what the retailer orders. So at the end of the day, you're going to be selling the product into Kroger and they're going to want Unify to deliver the product. So you're going to have to have Unify pick up your product so that you can deliver it to Kroger through them. More of a warehouse and delivery operation. You may have to hire a merchandising team to make sure the product is displayed properly on the shelf. You may have to hire verification teams to go in and do, you know, private shopping to make sure that the product is priced right and that it's, you know, not sitting in a box in the back. But when we're talking about one of the larger delivery operations or even working with a major retailer like Costco, a Walmart, Target, there's a lot of stipulations that they have in their agreements that you're going to want to be aware of before you get to that level. One of the examples is if you're shipping a product to them and you have an overage or you have more product on the pallet than they're expecting, they're going to be charging you a fee for that. And they may even charge you to ship it back to them. So you're going to want to be aware of the overage charges as well as what happens if the purchase order is canceled. So let's say the purchase order is canceled. They don't want, you know, blueberry going to their warehouse in California anymore. If you still ship blueberry to the California plant, they're going to charge you a cancellation fee. And again, you may be on the hook for shipping the product back. Um, again, that goes into a lot of logistical problems where if you're packing your own pallets or you're having a, um, a 3PL, a third party logistics um, person pack the pr product for you, you could be charged if they do it wrong. If there's a wrong pack or if they allocate the wrong size uh, boxes that the retailer hasn't specified or if the product doesn't fit on the shelf because it was rebagged and that wasn't in the negotiation. You need to be aware of all of that before you get to that point because that's going to be in that agreement. Um, next one is going to be what happens if you have a product that gets recalled. You know, if you have a bad battery, if you have, you know, a salmonella in the chicken that gets shipped to you. So you're going to want to know ahead of time what that looks like and how much it's going to cost you, where the fees are hiding in that agreement. Uh, finally, one of the most egregious problems that a lot of people have right now is that they get charged late delivery fees if they're not within you know, a five to 20 minute window. And the problem is not that the product has to be there at that specific time, that it's late or early. It's that if you're not there within that window, you get charged a fee. And when you're using a shipping company that is not your own, they don't care as much as you do about those kind of things. So, you know, they may be sitting at a dock and they may be there a day early. 
and they may have to sit there for a day. And there's been a lot of cases with suppliers of ours where the delivery driver has not wanted to stay there and just says, we're not delivering this load and goes on to the next place. You get charged a late fee, your product goes God knows where, and you're responsible for that. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of ramifications that you can have on that. So knowing all these things ahead of time, understanding the logistics of how your product is getting to the distributors, you're gonna to wanna to build that all in to your agreements, to your pricing, and to your understanding when negotiating upfront before you get to that level.